This is a little demonstration of visual rules inside feature templates. So this was introduced with the December 2022 release of NX, NX 2212. And this is what we're going to see here. I've instantiated a feature template into this part here that's called visual rule example. <laughs> and, uh, and inside here, we can see uh, a couple things happening in this dialog. Okay. There's a note in here that says that this block height is constrained by a visual rule to stay between 150 and 300 millimeters. This is what we're going to, the behavior we're going to see right now, this is 200, of course. Uh, if we change this to 300, then our, uh, our block, of course, will, will become taller and that's great. Um, if we take this and try to go higher than that, say make this 500, uh, as soon as I hit enter here, a couple things are going to happen or okay. Here, a couple things are going to happen. One is that it's going to correct the, the top, top end here back to 300. So it's going to correct block height, take it back to 300 here. And we'll also see an alert pop up to tell us that it's done that. Okay. So here again, with 500, I'm going to hit enter. And again, it's going to switch back to 300 right away. There you can see it did it. And it's going to throw this alert that says that the block height has been reset to 300 millimeters. Okay. Um, on the low end, we can do the same kind of thing. There's 150. If we put in 50 here and hit enter, similarly, we're going to see it auto correct back to the minimum of 150. And we'll see a similar alert come down here, uh, on that bottom end, right? So as we hit enter here again, you see it corrected it to 150 and here it says block height has been reset to 150 down below. Okay. Now, the question is, how would we do that? And the answer is that we're using, of course, a visual, some visual rules here to do this. So let's go take a look at that and uh, see what that looks like. Okay. So to do that, we're going to go to the reuse library. Let's go to that visual rule example definition here in the feature template. And let's open this part and go take a look. So with this part with the definition in it, again, the definition is stored there as that feature at the end of the, the part navigator. Uh, in this particular, uh, in any definition part. In here, you'll see that the features involved in that. This particular one is just the block there. Uh, but if we go into the feature template author environment here, uh, we'll see a couple of things. On the dialog itself, here for the block height, we need to trigger that visual rule to work, to go do its thing. And we're going to do that here uh, in this block height widget and that we can assign an action that's going to happen here when the value changes uh, in this in this widget, right? And right now we've chosen to, to run a visual rule there. We could run a, 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 a journal file that's coming from the operating system. We could get one that's an embedded journal. That's fine. We could do nothing, right? Usually we're going to be doing nothing. Um, but in this case, we've chosen to, to execute a visual rule. And we've chosen specifically to do one called fix the value, right? And that fix the value is an external rule that's that's ready to ready to run there. So let's go look at what fix the value is and how it looks and uh, and how it was built, and uh, and we'll go from there. In uh, the older PTS, uh, this configure uh, the UI configuration was a was a, a I think a dialog tab here. There was a another tab here for in the product templates with uh, configuration for, for the assembly and so forth. And then uh, visual rules was a tab in the old PTS. Uh, those tabs have become buttons on the, on the toolbar here in, in te uh, feature template uh, author and in, in product template author. And uh, so visual rules, let's, let's launch the visual rules environment here. And that's going to let us build these. Okay. That fix the value rule. You notice there are a few others and we'll, we'll look at these here in just a second. There's one called fix too low fix too high and one called do nothing. And, and we're going to see where those come in here in just a second. But this fix the value rule right here is a really simple one, right? And every visual rule is going to have a start node. And from there, we're going to build stuff that happens. <laughs> and these will flow from top to bottom. In this particular case, we're going to fetch that expression called block height, look at its value there, and then have a couple of conditionals. And one says that if that value of block height is less than 150, then we're going to fix it. We're going to run a rule called fix too low. Um, if it's not lower than 150, then we're going to do nothing. Okay. On the other end here, if that value is greater than 300, then we're going to run this other rule, this fix too high. Uh, and if it's not greater than 300, we'll again, we'll do nothing here. Okay. So each of these conditionals, uh, we're going to specify those parameters down below. 
and again, choose here a visual rule that we're going to run as the action when the positive case is true here, right? Uh, and, and the true case is true, right? And similarly with false, uh, we can go and, and choose an action to do when it's false, okay? Um, let's go look at these real quick, the fixed too low and fixed too high. We'll come and choose fixed too low here first. And what's happening here, again, we have a start node, uh, start expression value. We're going to set an expression value here in this case. Here we're, we're setting the expression called block height to do a value of 150. This is where we're correcting the low end. Uh, put together a little string here that says block height has been reset to 150, and we're going to kick that out as an alert, right? So again, we're going to set the value, let's put out the alert. Similarly, on the high end, we'll do the same thing, right? We'll look at that, well, actually, sorry, we're going to set the expression value to 300 on the high end here. Um, again, put together a, a string that says the block height's been reset to 300 millimeters, put that out as, a, as an alert uh, out there. Okay, the do nothing rule actually does nothing. <laughs> so in those false cases back here, uh, where we don't need to fix it on the low end and we don't need to fix it on the high end, if the number's just fine in the middle of the range, for instance, then these will end up doing nothing here. Okay, Th this one let's build kind of from scratch so we can see kind of the process of how to do that. Okay, we've got this fetch expression block right here. Easiest way to grab that block height expression value is to just grab the expression block height and drag it over and drop it in. And this will create uh, a fetch expression node that will go grab the value of block height. Okay, um, We can connect that to start here, for instance, and that would be a starter process. Um, from there, we could build these conditionals. Right, Those conditionals are in a, a construct loop here, or construct group, rather, down below. And um, let's grab a couple of those, and we'll, we'll bring those in. There's our, our low... And uh, let's do a, a high one here as well. So on the low end here, um, one little cryptic thing here is this dollar one right here. We're going to bring in this the, the first thing that comes in the top of this node right there. This is going to say if this is less than 150, then we're going to use our right mouse button here and say fix too low. Um, if it's greater than 150, then, then it's in the right range, so we'll do nothing here. Okay, so we built that, that conditional. Let's bring over another one here, and this guy, and we're encroaching just a little bit there. This guy is going to be the opposite direction, right? This one was going to be greater than, right click and choose greater than, and if this is greater than 300, then here again we're going to fix too high or do nothing, okay? And then again we can connect here, grab that value, pass it into each of these guys here. Uh, this one, did I get the dollar one? Yep, I need to do the dollar one to catch that value as it comes in. There we go. And and so that's that's running the same kind of thing twice, <laughs> right? Which is uh, not what we're after. There's my extra down there. Um, so yeah, we can grab these and, and move them around or grab these in this case and delete them, right? We don't need those. And if we fit that there, we can, we can see our, our basic rule. Okay? So... Uh, with those in place, uh, again, as we come to our user interface here, we can come to that block widget, we can come down, tell it that here that we want to have an action when the value changes, and that action A is going to be a visual rule, and then uh, secondly is going to, going to choose that fix the value as the action to execute there for this visual rule, okay? And that'll get us this behavior, right? Where we're in our, uh, actually we're still in template studio here, let's get out of there. Uh, yes, let's discard the changes. There we go. So as we look at our feature template now and we edit this, we get that behavior, right? Or if we shoot low, it's going to correct it to the low value. If we shoot high here, it's going to correct it back to 300 and, and throw our alert. Okay. So hopefully that's a useful example of uh, using a visual rule inside a feature template.